Hey everyone, and welcome to this Piscal and FlowLab tutorial. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take your assets that you make in Piscal, so your sprites and your animations, and bring them over to FlowLab. It's really, really simple. So again, FlowLab has um, a sprite editor. By just clicking on your sprite, going to edit, edit sprite, and then you're in the built-in editor and um, it can do all the basics and it can do animation. However, I think that the uh, drawing tools and creation tools um, are better in Piscal, so it's worth a couple extra steps. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and open up this uh, potion sprite that I have here. And you can see here it's just a static sprite, no animation, one frame, and then there it is. So to get it over into FlowLab, I'm going to come over here to the right, and I'm going to click on Export. And I've got these four tabs up here. I can either do a GIF, a PNG, a ZIP, and then others. I'm going to go ahead and do a PNG. And, and there's this first export here that says Sprite Sheet File Export. And since it is a single frame, it's just 32 by 32 pixels. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Download. Now, when you come over here to FlowLab, each one of these uh, tiles is 32 by 32 pixels so that's the standard so that's a really good way for you to kind of figure out how big you want your sprites to be before you start painting them come here to FlowLab and figure out okay do I want my sprite my villain or my character to be to fill up 2 by 2 so that would be 64 by 64 so things like that so you can do a little bit of uh, preparation okay so now I'm ready to bring the asset in here I'm going to click on an open spot, do create, give it a name, click on edit sprite, and simply come down here and click on upload. Choose the file, and press OK. So there it is in my game, and remember that wherever you see um, empty open spots, and you will see that there is a, I did do kind of a, a semi-transparent layer, so that way we'll hopefully mimic glass. Click on OK and I'm gonna go here to physics and I'm gonna uncheck is solid because I don't want my character to uh, be stopped by it but I'll click on enable collisions um, so that way my character could um, run into it, collide with it and then maybe have something happen. Um, and then I'm gonna choose the collision shape. I'm gonna go ahead and just choose square as that's most common and there it is. I'll just put it here on the ground and press play and sorry that's a little loud but you can basically see that my character can move around and there you are okay good so that's the regular object let's now go ahead and I'm gonna go back to my gallery and let's take a look at how you bring in an animation so I have two animated sprites here a little campfire here and this little guy doing an idle animation I'm going to go here and open up the uh, campfire. And it's just two frames. Um, I could certainly make it better, uh, but for now, this is good. So again, I'm going to go to Export. Um, this time, instead of Ping or PNG, sorry, you have an option of doing, if I do a PNG, it's going to put both frames onto one uh, sheet, and that's called the Sprite Sheet. Um, FlowLab does not have a way of cutting or slicing and separating um, the, uh, the frames. Um, and so you would have to do that in another step. So in this case, I would not recommend that. I'm going to recommend that you choose the zip file, and then it's going to ask you um, what do you want to call it, and it's going to put this prefix in. So it's going to be called sprite underscore zero, I believe, and then sprite underscore one. So you can change the name, and they'll both be called this. So I'm just going to go ahead and call it campfire and underscore, and I would keep that underscore, and click on download zip. Okay, so now you're going to want to go to your downloads folder and you're going to want to find the zip file and you want to double click the zip file. And that will typically unzip it into a folder and here you'll see that they're both named campfire0 and campfire1.png. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and create my new object. Edit the sprite and you want to make sure that you actually edit this sprite and then go in and do the animation. So I'm going to do upload, go find my folder, and I'll just bring in the very first frame. 
All right, so there we go. Then I'm going to click over here on animation. I'm going to create a brand new animation. And I'll just go ahead and call this, uh, how about Flickr? Okay, so I've got the first frame here. I'll click on the little plus button here to add a new frame. And then I'll go to upload to upload the second frame of my animation. Now, if you had more frames, uh, you would obviously then create more frames here and then just upload those as well. As far as I know, there's no way uh, to automatically um, upload uh, multiple frames. Uh, so you can see here, here's the uh, fire that's at a delay of five. Let's do four, three. Yeah, I think I'm going to settle on four. Okay, press OK. All right, so now um, I'm going to go ahead and click on behaviors because I need to add the code to actually make it animate. If you don't do this step, you'll have the sprite in there, but no animation. So I'm going to go over here to triggers, and I'm going to choose an always trigger. So that way it just keeps playing forever. And I'm going to come down here and look for the animation. There we go. So it's in the properties category and animation. And since I only have one animation for this object, Flickr loads up right there. But it is good to uh, be here. And I'm just going to go ahead and click on loop animation um, and say OK. And I'm going to go from out up here to start like that. Click on OK. And I'll go ahead and I'll put this maybe right there. All right, let's take a look. So you've got the fire animating, um, and I've got the potion in there, ready to uh, have some code put on it so I can do something better. Um, yeah, and everything's working all right. So I hope this helps you out. Bring in all of your awesome artwork and assets from Piskel into Flow Lab. They work really great together. Thanks, everyone, and I will see you next time.